Any minute now, Wisconsin's summer tradition of jackhammers, bulldozers, and slow down traffic is going to start up again after the 4th of July holiday. We'll get you a first alert look at traffic. Wisconsin honey and syrup producers think new FDA labels won't be so sweet if they imply that they added sugar to their products. We'll share why they say it could be a problem. This is News 3 This Morning. Call me butter, yeah. ladies and gentlemen, because yeah. I'm on a roll today. <laughs> we are goofy this morning. We yeah. are. I'm so sorry. The midweek day off just like Throws threw us, us through a loop. Hey, good morning, by the way, and welcome to News 3 this morning. It is Thursday, July 5th. Hope you guys had a nice fourth. I did, thank I you. I sure did. Chris Went saw, to the lake. Yeah, you saw fish jumping out of the lake. It was so hot. That's what it he was, was telling hot us. yesterday. Fish tails you know? here at 6 a.m. this morning. I made the joke, you know, the lake started to boil. It didn't actually boil, but it was hot. The lake yes. was the place to be. Temperatures this morning already in the 70s. We do have a nice sunrise, so that's something to think about. It kind of feels, I don't know what day of the week it is sometimes. Yeah, I know exactly. it's Thursday, but I thought it was a Monday at one point. Listen, we're tracking some cloud cover, some showers back to the west. They did fall apart this morning, but we'll expect those to regenerate as a cold front works its way into the picture later on this afternoon. All the clouds you see between here and the Twin Cities, yep, that is the cold front ever so slowly working its way into town. But check out Fargo. It was at 58 earlier, now hey. 57. So we're getting cooler, 70s to the south and east of that as that cold front pushes on into the picture. So we'll keep our fingers crossed. Just come on, buddy. You can do it. It will spark <laughs> off some showers and thunderstorms right around lunchtime. And then once those push on through, we'll see more clearing skies returning to the picture. And that is going to be good news for tomorrow. We do have one more day of the heat index. That is going to be today. We'll see temperatures feeling like they're in the low 90s, but that's about it. In terms of traffic, things do continue to look good. We're moving smooth about across the belt line, and I don't think there are any brake lights beginning to show up just yet, uh, but that'll change here soon as people get ready to head back to work. I imagine people have the day off. They I might. Hope. They were smart. People Look at us. Yeah. Look at us doofuses <laughs> here on the desk here. Like. Hey, we're having fun, so that's what matters. <laughs> there you go. We try so. at least. Thank you, Chris. My Thank pleasure. You. <laughs> uh, we start the news this half hour overseas, where Chinese officials say the U.S. is, quote, opening fire on the world with increased tariffs set to go into effect on Friday. And those Chinese leaders say they will respond immediately with increased tariffs of their own. The president is set to put increased tariffs of $34 billion worth of Chinese imports starting tomorrow and is threatened to expand that to as much as $450 billion worth of Chinese goods. U.S. farmers could be the first impacted and the most impacted as China has threatened to increase prices on imported soybeans, grains, and cotton that it brings in from American farmers. Asian markets are down this morning. Wall Street, though, is showing modest gains in pre-market trading. Back in Wisconsin, Janesville Public Safety Unions do not expect to lose members despite last week's Supreme Court ruling on required dues. The high court decision said unions are, could no longer require non-members to pay membership fees as they negotiated contracts for union members. That requirement was taken away, you may remember, for most Wisconsin unions in 2011 when state lawmakers passed Act 10. However, firefighter and police unions were exempt from that legislation. The Janesville Gazette reports the city's Professional Police Association believes its benefits guaranteeing a lawyer to its members will prevent police officers from leaving the union. The Janesville Firefighters Union also told the paper it didn't expect membership to drop after that Supreme Court ruling. After concerns with the city's water supply containing high levels of lead, Milwaukee's Health Department is being blamed for consistently failing to clean up potentially lead-poisoned homes where children live. The Legislative Reference Bureau reports that orders to clean up homes with lead hazards like lead paint have dropped from 77 in 2015 to just 34 in 2017. 17. Citations for those who failed to abate homes went from 46 to just one last year. The number of abatements overseen by city health officials was also down to none, zero in 2016 and 2017. Monroe Street businesses who are struggling with this summer's road construction, they're getting support now from their other businesses on State Street. The organizers of the annual Maxwell Street Days event on State Street have invited now all of the businesses on Monroe Street to take part. That festival has traditionally only been open for the State Street companies. One Monroe Street business owner says she only had two customers in the entire month of June, only two, because her street, her road is ripped up. There's nowhere to park. She's hoping the Maxwell Street Days event can help. It gives us hope. And I hope, you know, that it's not a pouring or boiling hot day. 
and that people come and enjoy what they see, even if they don't buy. Maxwell Street Days starts two weeks from tomorrow and runs from July 20th through the 22nd through State Street, all along that street. Five minutes after the hour right now, local beekeepers and syrup producers are worried about what might happen if the FDA adds the words added sugars to their nutritional labels. So that proposal is designed to educate consumers about what they're ingesting, what they're taking in, but some say it's a little misleading. News 3's Christina Laurie is live this morning in Monona with the latest reaction. Good morning, Christina. Good morning, Adam and Dan Danica. Area honey and syrup producers are upset because they say changes that the FDA would make to nutrition labels would impact their local production and hurt business. It's drawing a lot of buzz. The FDA has already received more than 3,000 comments on its proposal. Honey and maple syrup producers argue that a label with the words added sugars is confusing and misleading because nothing is being added to their products. The Wisconsin Honey Producers Association is one of the organizations fighting that proposal. They say the changes could lead consumers in believing that producers are adding corn syrup or other sugars to the product when in fact they're not. It's just naturally occurring sugars, they say, that are already in their products, so nothing is different. Right now, the FDA ranks Wisconsin fourth in maple syrup production and 12th in honey production. Now, coming up in the next half hour of the program, we'll have more on how the FDA is reacting to pushback from local honey producers. As you're dealing with tariffs, as you're dealing with all, I mean, yeah. it's one more thing that, that business owners have to deal with. All right, Christina Laurie reporting live for us this morning. Thank you. 606 right now, and a 19-year-old faces tentative charges this morning after his car rolled over on Madison's east side, and he pretended he wasn't the driver. This crash happened around 8 Tuesday night on the intersection of South Stoughton Road and Cottage Grove Road. Police say the man tried to change lanes while another car did the same, so he overcorrected and hit the shoulder, causing his car to flip over. Officers say he then ran away, took off some of his clothing, and told police he was jogging when the crash happened. The driver was not under the influence, according to police, and only had minor injuries. He was charged with hit and run and driving with an invalid license. Speaking of driving, road crews are back at work this morning. The Department of Transportation put some significant road projects on across the state on hold for the 4th of July. Work stopped around noon Tuesday, you may remember, to help the estimated 1 million Wisconsinites driving to their holiday destinations. However, construction at spots like Barona Road and the interstate between Madison and Beloit, that was all scheduled to start back up again at 6 o'clock this morning. We'll see if that's affecting traffic at all when we check in with Josh Tim in just a few minutes. Almost 6.08 right now, and Dr. Mayer is talking about all of the time we spend on screens and how that can affect your child's mental health. The Schrager kids, now proud owners of an Xbox, so I'm yes, sure this conversation are. will resonate with my friend here. We will look more at the issue after the break. We have one more day of hot and humid weather before we see a much more comfortable weekend forecast. Chris is in for Hattie this morning with your first alert forecast when News 3 This Morning returns.
Good morning, folks. We've gotten a lot of the cloud cover out of here, so now we have somewhat of a beautiful morning showing up across South Central Wisconsin. Here's a live look from the WISC TV camera, and you've got a little bit of color to that sunrise, and that's a shape of things to come as we do have a nice forecast on our horizon. Now, we've been tracking some showers and thunderstorms, especially to the west this morning. They have not had a lot to support them, so they've fallen apart as they work their way to the east. Eventually, we'll see more of those later on throughout the day, but it's going to take the cold front getting closer to south central Wisconsin before we do so. 73 degrees the temperature right now. It's still a bit muggy as well as you step outside. Milwaukee's at 76. Everyone is in the upper 60s and low 70s for those temperatures this morning. So do expect that as you head out the door. We'll warm things up as we go towards lunchtime. That's when temperatures will make it into the low 80s. We'll also see more showers and thunderstorms beginning to develop and quickly working their way to the south and east. Once that cold front moves on through here, temperatures fall back through the 70s, 60s, and potentially upper 50s by the time we wake up tomorrow morning. We'll see some clearing skies with that as well. But a dome of high pressure coming out of Canada does settle over us by tomorrow morning, and you'll notice a big difference for your Friday, even into your Saturdays. This is pretty much going to take a little weekend vacation to the upper Midwest. It's going to keep the sunshine around. It's also going to, going to keep temperatures a little bit more on the mild side. So we'll be warm today. Temperatures topping out in the mid and upper 80s, but watch what happens after starting out in the 50s tomorrow. Tomorrow. It will be a struggle to actually get out of the 70s for those highs. With enough sunshine, some of us could see the 80s for those highs, and that's why we're going with 81 for tomorrow. Same with 81 for your Saturday, but there's a reason you'll want to enjoy this weekend because as soon as we get through this weekend, the heat and the steam are certainly back into the picture. 73 to 80 degrees this morning will be muggy as well. By the time we get you into the afternoon and evening, we're talking 85 degrees for those highs. That's also when the best chance for the showers and thunderstorms does come back into the picture. Now get this, we return uh, to the low 80s and upper 70s for the weekend, as I did mention, and then upper 80s coming back into the picture on Monday next week. It'll also get humid Monday and Tuesday. Additional storm chances do arrive with, excuse me, Wednesday night, Thursday and Friday before we'll cool things back off into the low 80s. Now let's go to Josh Tim with your first alert traffic. Josh. Yes, yeah, starting off pretty quiet on the Madison roadways. No major issues, and the belt line is moving well in both directions with the front end to end. Uh, looking at Dane County, there are some brake lights on the northbound side of Rona Road approaching the belt line, and a few slowdowns on Stoughton Road approaching the East Washington intersection. Downtown routes are moving well so far around the Capitol Square and UW campus. Probably won't see volume there for at least another half hour or so. And other main routes heading into the city, they're cruising along at the usual speeds. No crashes or delays here in the Madison area. For your first alert traffic, I'm Josh Tim. It seems like the recommendations for mammograms are constantly changing, and at the same time, the technology is advancing to make those scans a bit more accurate. We wanted to ask Dr. Mindy Romera about those changes. She joins us this morning. She is our medical expert from SSM Health. Good morning. Good morning. So we wanted to talk to you in particular about this idea of 3D mammography and what that can kind of bring to the table, because again, I feel like as a woman, <laughs> I hear different recommendations every week. So exactly. Yeah. You're, you're correct, and in one way, it's great because yeah. we're improving technology we're making things better but you're right it's so confusing and ultimately no matter what I say today please consult your doctor double triple check what I'm saying I think the takeaway point here is traditional mammography is 2D mm -hmm. so we're talking about flat images a physician a radiologist a cancer doctor will review those images on a computer screen and tell you what exactly is happening now of course with a 2D image you have some limitations sure so a lot of uh, patients a lot of women get called back and they say well we see this spot we're gonna have to re-image it in some way and of course not only is that anxiety provoking but you're of course getting more x-ray more radiation perhaps and more testing which is more expensive but with 3D mammography what you're looking at is different angles, of course, of that breast tissue. So a couple of advantages here. Number one is you have less callbacks, less of those kind of scary callbacks that say, well, I'm not sure what this blip is. We have to call you back. The second is in younger women, especially who have dense, denser tissue, mm -hmm. this is a better imaging modality. So kind of close to almost a CT scan, but you're not really having all that radiation exposure. And thirdly, like we always talk about, as technology improves, this is really increasing the chances of finding that cancer. And the game here with breast cancer is early detection, 
early treatment, better survival rates. Mm -hmm. So one or two out of every thousand that then is found earlier, this is a great thing. You're saving that life. It's fascinating. Yeah. And speaking of technology, <laughs> we wanted to talk uh, about screens and kids yes. once again. I mean, again, study after study showing the effects that this can have physically and also mentally. So Correct. we wanted to talk about screen time and, and kids. What are you finding lately is the big mental health component here? Right. We're always preaching be mindful of screen time. Mm -hmm. Tell your child less screen time is better. Mm -hmm. And I think we as adults, of course, are culprits as well. Everything <laughs> we do is a screen. <laughs> Computer, work, phone, iPad, whatever it is. So now the question is, is it really bad for children? And if it is, how is it affecting their mental health? Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, at excessive rates of screen time, health disorders, mental health disorders, do increase. They become socially more withdrawn, depression rates increase, happiness levels decrease. So now the recommendation is somewhere between two and four hours is a great recommendation for your child, of course, over the age of two, four, six, to really limit that screen time. Of course, you say, but the minute a child even enters school now, even mm -hmm. toddlers in first or second grade are handed an iPad. So many things are done on the screen. So it really also is the content of that time spent on the screen. Are they doing academic Academic work? Sure. Is it homework? Or is it uh, perhaps digital gaming, Facebook, those kinds of things? Of course, with the whole social media revolution, right. uh, we always talk about, especially for the time for kids, the whole aspect of bullying mm -hmm. and perhaps that component on a young person's health. Does that component then put pressures on them differently that, of course, we didn't face 30, 40 years ago? So definitely limiting that screen time, but also talking to your kids about the content of what they're doing with their screen time. Absolutely. We have more of those resources on our Time to Talk page. Always have to throw that out there. Thank you so yeah. much, Dr. Mara, for joining us this morning. Great to be here. News through this morning. We'll be right back.
Good morning. We are tracking a beautiful sunrise out there, and honestly, today won't be that bad of a day, but we do have more heat, humidity, and showers and thunderstorms in your forecast before this weekend, folks. This weekend will be awesome, and I'll be breaking down the details on that later. But for today, it's already in the low 70s. We'll keep our temperatures in the 70s throughout the morning, warming up to about 80 degrees by lunchtime. We have been tracking some showers on Doppler track. A lot of those have fallen apart, but we do expect more showers and thunderstorms to regenerate and work their way to the south and east as we go throughout the day. The greatest shower chance comes into the picture right around lunchtime with temperatures about 10 degrees warmer than where they are now, and then eventually we'll get more sun sunshine coming back into the picture with a cold front coming through later on this afternoon and evening. Danica. All right, Chris, thank you so much. A Mexican native in our area is leading a 24 hour bike ride this weekend in support of his fellow immigrants and refugees. Baltazar Deanda Santana wants those communities to feel respected and valued in Dane County. So we started this day long ride last year and he's going to do it again on Saturday. Santana will start at 8 o'clock in the morning at Olin Park and keep going until 8 a.m. the next morning. He plans to make short stops every four hours or so along the way as he bikes through Madison, Fitchburg, and Middleton. Other people are being encouraged to join him on the ride as well. Holidays like the 4th of July often cause the blood and platelet reserves at the Red Cross to drop down pretty low, so there's a chance you can actually help with that problem later today. We're talking about the 18th annual Beach Drade Days Blood Drive. It's being held at the Sheridan Hotel on John Nolan Drive to help encourage new donors or get people who have donated before to do it again. Red Cross is offering people a free t-shirt, a $10 Visa gift card, and a picnic. If they come give blood, that drive runs from 11 this morning until 6 o'clock tonight. 622 right now. Christina Laurie is trying to uh, keep from getting stung <laughs> this morning. She is live with some busy bees as honey producers are worried about new nutrition labels and how that could affect their business. Plus, the State Department of Corrections says there is a shortage of cameras, which has backlogged its order and delayed a major body cam program. The day's top stories are next on News 3 This Morning.
Nursing home employees put their residents at risk. That is what the latest investigation shows after the home hired a registered sex offender to care for seniors. And a former Wisconsin state trooper who once promised to serve and protect. We'll find out how long today society will be protected from him after he was convicted of child pornography. This is News 3 This Morning. Good morning and welcome back to the final half hour of News 3 this morning, 626 right now on this Thursday, July 5th. We have one more pretty hot day to yeah. get through before we get a little bit of a break. Let's send it out to Chris Reese. He's in for Hattie this morning out on the patio. Chris, how's it feeling out there so far? So far, it actually doesn't feel as bad as it could be. It is humid out here. That is one of the things, but with the clouds that came through earlier, it kind of feels good out there. Temperatures are in the 70s this morning. We're going to keep it that way for a good chunk of the morning. They're going to be slow to warm up. Some upper 60s are showing up, but we are at 73 for us here in Madison. We were tracking some showers and thunderstorms earlier, but those have since dissipated. We're waiting more showers and thunderstorms to develop probably around lunchtime. In fact, in your day planner, we'll keep the clouds around throughout the morning. Showers and thunderstorms around lunch and early afternoon by four o'clock. Those should be coming to an end with some lingering cloud cover, but then clear skies by the time the sun sets later on tonight. Temperatures will be in the 70s. And by tomorrow morning, we're likely going to see temperatures get this in the upper 50s. It will feel good. As far as traffic, it looks good right now. No major delays showing up on the belt lines. A little bit of a slowdown from Stoughton Road approach, approaching the belt line. Downtown around Capitol Square and throughout campus, that all looks good as well. Now, Verona Road to the belt line, that's going to be a little bit slow with that construction that's ongoing. It's going to be ongoing for quite a while. But other ways or other roads to the belt line are looking good. Once you get on the belt line, it's going to take you about your normal time to get to your destination. There are still no crashes or delays showing up this morning. All right, Chris, thank you so much. The state health department is criticizing a Sauk City nursing home for not preventing a registered sex offender from abusing three female residents there. The Baraboo News Republic reports that the Department of Health Services identified nine federal violations and determined the Maplewood of Sauk Prairie home be placed or placed its female residents in immediate danger by failing to watch 69 year old Galen Malish. Now he faces multiple felony charges for these alleged assaults. The state health department also reportedly determined two administrators at the facility attempted to stop an investigation into the matter. An administrator for the facility told the state it would continue to work toward protecting the health and well-being of its residents. Former Wisconsin state trooper will be sentenced later today in Jefferson County Court on child pornography charges. Frank Richard Torres had served as a state trooper for more than 20 years before he resigned after he was arrested in February of 2017. Investigators found more than 80 digital storage devices Devices with videos of children performing sex acts inside of his Cambridge home. Torres admitted downloading those files. He pleaded guilty to five felony counts back in December. We will update his sentencing later today on channel3000.com. The Dane County Sheriff's Office is investigating how a jail inmate died on Wednesday morning. The lieutenant in charge of the jail said the 29-year-old man from Beaver Dam was having trouble breathing when jail and medical staff started CPR. An autopsy by the medical examiner concluded the death did not appear suspicious. The man had recently been arrested for a fourth time drunk driving offense and a probation violation. Legislative leaders here in Wisconsin are waiting for a report from the state's Department of Corrections on the impact body cameras have on reducing assaults in prison. That report was initially due on the first of the month. However, the department has not gotten those new cameras yet. The DOC was given more than $591,000 in the most recent biennial budget to buy 200 body cameras for officers who work in solitary confinement units at six maximum security prisons. In a letter to lawmakers, Corrections Secretary Kathy Jess admitted that just hasn't happened yet. She says the process has taken a lot longer than expected and an industry shortage led to even more delays. In a statement to the Associated Press, a department spokesperson says that the department did pick a vendor to supply those cameras back in April. Governor Walker says the body camera program will be put in place within the year. A Wisconsin judge will not be able to hear cases as he is accused of stalking and violating a restraining order toward his clerk. Municipal Judge Leonard Kaczynski works in Fox Crossing. That's about 40 miles, 40 minutes rather, south of Green Bay. State Supreme Court suspended him while he goes through the criminal justice system. Kaczynski's court clerk has alleged he harassed her and retaliated against her. He told USA Today Wisconsin it's a personality dispute here that's just gotten out of control. 
Now, if Judge Kaczynski's name sounds familiar, it's because he was featured and criticized in the Netflix series Making a Murderer as he represented Brendan Dassey in some of his criminal proceedings. Dodge County deputies continue to look into a fatal head-on crash that happened over the 4th. The accident happened around 2.30 yesterday afternoon on State Highway 16 near 2nd Street Road, about a mile and a half north of downtown Watertown. Now, deputies believe one of the two drivers involved in that crash crossed the center line on 16. Those drivers didn't have any passengers with them at the time. One was pronounced dead at the scene. The other was taken to an area hospital and is expected to be okay. We hope to learn more about the people involved in this accident later on today. We'll update that information on channel3000.com. State arson investigators have determined a home explosion in Outagamie County was caused by a gas leak and was not criminal in nature. Two people were killed when that house in the town of Oneida exploded on June 30th. 27-year-old Emily Tank died at the scene. 65-year-old Alan Weisler died the next day at the hospital. Oneida police say the criminal investigation into this incident is now closed. 632 right now. There are thousands of people currently commenting on the FDA's plan to change nutrition labels to point out added sugars in certain foods. Wisconsin's honey and maple syrup producers are among those who are worried that the label changes would actually mislead customers. Christina Laurie is live on the east side this morning with what we're learning about this topic. Good morning, Christina. Good morning, Adam and Danica. The FDA has already seen a lot of pushback on this proposal, and it's drawing a lot of buzz here locally, especially by area beekeepers and associations. Honey and maple syrup producers argue that a label with the words added sugars is confusing and misleading because they say nothing is being added to the products. The FDA says it is listening to what people have to say on the issue. They add they're looking forward to working with stakeholders to devise a sensible solution. The federal agency says it acknowledges that feedback from producers indicates that their proposal does not provide the clarity that the FDA intended. It's an issue that many locals aren't taking lightly. Wisconsin rakes fourth nationally in terms of honey production and 12th in terms of maple syrup production. So it's very important to people living here. That's why it's a hot button issue creating a lot of buzz. And we're seeing bees like right across the <laughs> camera screen there. It's pretty cool. So you and Mark Schilling, our photojournalist, need to be careful out there, Christina. We appreciate it. Trying to stay safe. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Thank you so much. Won't bring any back with me. No, no okay, great. Thanks. <laughs> They'll be much less happy without their hives for Probably. sure. All right, 633 right now. We are learning more about how a Supreme Court ruling could affect the unions that represent fire and police departments in our area. We'll have an update in the morning sprint. And there's a far out opportunity to check out artifacts from the 60s pretty close by today on UW's campus. We'll tell you more about that. The news through this morning continues.
It is 637 on this Thursday morning. Welcome back to the program. It's the time of the day. We always ask you to share a little bit of your morning with us. And Lynn had posted this picture on our Facebook page from Amish country. I thought it was pretty. It is pretty. Yeah. Uh, so I always like animals in the morning. That's a, lot of, that's a lot of wool for all the heat we've been seeing. <laughs> I know it's a little bit uh, counterintuitive to show that. Yes. But anyhow, gotta, thank you, Lynn. We appreciate it. Get out with the shears, whoever owns these. Come on now. <laughs> Have some love for the sheep there. What does your morning look like? Take a picture and post it over our, on our Facebook page, our Twitter page, Instagram, whatever it is. Use the hashtag MyNews3Morning. We share our favorites every morning here on the program. Milwaukee Brewers start a weekend series against the Atlanta Braves tonight at Miller Park with the best record in the National League. However, if you're looking to catch a game closer to home, you can get the quintessential Wisconsin experience at Warner Park's Duck Pond. It is the last night of the Mallards three-day Wisconsin special. For $19, you get a terrace seat, a brat, cheese curds, corn, beer, or soda, and a Mallards hat. The game against Battle Creek starts just after 6 o'clock tonight. And the Mallards, by the way, are doing very, very well this summer season. Yeah, not too shabby. All right, you can take a look back at the 60s and learn how that decade has shaped our city on the UW campus today. The university is featuring a handful of exhibits that look back on a decade of discontent, featuring photography, flyers, and other iconic signs of the times. They really do share a snapshot of what it was like to live in Madison during the Vietnam War and the protests against it. You can visit those exhibits at the Memorial Union, the Kohler Art Library, and the Chazen Museum of Art. 639 almost right now. You did not need to be grilling yesterday to break no. a sweat. There is a break in the humidity, though, that's coming tonight. Before before that, could see a little rain, maybe even some storms this afternoon. Chris is in for Hattie this morning. We'll get his first large forecast in a way more tolerable <laughs> weekend he's talking about coming up next. But first, we want to say happy belated birthday to Megan. We are so sorry we missed you on Tuesday, kiddo. Hope you're having an awesome birthday week. And thanks to all of the birthday boys and girls celebrating the big three. News three this morning will be right back.
We're looking live this morning at a hazy Platteville, courtesy of the Queen Bee Radio Skycam. Going to be another really warm day today, already in the 70s this morning, still humid. There is a break coming, though. Chris Reese is in for Hattie this morning. His first alert forecast is coming up. First, though, there's still a few days left for the world's largest music festival. Summerfest in Milwaukee was packed last night as names like Journey, Kesha drew crowds despite the heat and some rain there as well. Tonight's lineup features Sean Mendez, DJ Jazzy Jeff, Charlie XCX. I don't know Charlie XCX. And Brett Young, along with tens of other artists, the music festival runs through this weekend. Don't worry, you're still super hip in my eyes. <laughs> totally All right. Not. If you're looking for a cheap night out with the family, you can catch a free movie tonight at the Chazen Museum of Art. The Summer Spin series continues with a showing of Finding Dory. The Finding Nemo sequel will be shown outside on East Campus Mall. The movie starts at 8. But there will be some activities beforehand. There are summer spin events every Thursday night through August 23rd. Adam tells me that the bathrooms in the museum will be open yep. through the movie. So the kiddos, if they need to go, they have a place to do it. And Chris Reese says they might have a nice night yeah, to actually true. see a movie outside. Good morning, Chris. Good morning. Yeah, they will have a nice night. And I do have to say, Adam, don't feel bad. I don't know who Charlie XDX is either. So <laughs> you do not have to feel bad. We have a beautiful sunrise still going on out there after the cloud cover that we had earlier now kind of moving in. The showers and thunderstorms, those have fallen apart. Now we're going to pay attention to the northwestern sky. As the cold front gets closer, we could see more showers and thunderstorms that develop, especially around lunchtime. Temperatures right now are at 73 degrees. Dew points are in the upper 60s. 73 for for Monroe as well, 72 down in Janesville. Well, lacrosse, one of the warm spots at 76 this morning. I've noticed lacrosse constantly one of those spots that stays a little bit warmer. Now, here's what's going to happen hour by hour. By 9 o'clock, we'll still have those temperatures in the 70s. By lunchtime, that's when more showers and thunderstorms will begin to develop and push their way to the south and east. They're going to get out of here fairly quickly and honestly I do think future track is a bit overdone with the coverage of those showers and thunderstorms but by tonight a northwesterly wind takes over clearing skies and temperatures that will fall into the upper 50s and low 60s this high pressure coming in is directly out of Canada so it's got much drier air which does heat up fast but it also cools off fast and it feels a whole lot better so that settles in Friday through Saturday it's going to keep the temperatures mild but it also will keep things very sunny was the low humidity as well. That's why this weekend is certainly one for uh, the trophy case when it comes to this weekend. It's a pick weekend. 85 degrees today. Watch what happens tomorrow morning. 59 for the start. And then tomorrow afternoon, it will be a struggle to actually see these temperatures getting out of the 70s. That's going to be very hard to do, but with enough sunshine and the dry air in place, it's certainly possible. In terms of the heat index, we really won't have to talk about it. Today, it'll feel like the upper 90s at times, but we won't have to worry about that going in through this weekend. We have highs for 81 Friday and Saturday, and that's again with enough sunshine. Enjoy that. It heats right back up as we go through the next 10 days, likely seeing those heat indices returning to the 90s again as well. So this morning, 73 to 80 degrees will be partly sunny, warm and muggy for the afternoon. 85 degrees your high. Yes, with the chance of some showers and thunderstorms. But as we look through the next seven and 10 days, we'll keep those temperatures remaining in the low 80s to start. But notice just how quickly we begin to warm things back up. We're already in the upper 80s by Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday. By Wednesday, we're just shy of 90 degrees and I wouldn't be surprised to actually hit 90 degrees. More rain chances do come back into the picture towards the end of next week. Now, here's your pet walk midnight in Madison. <laughs> I have to say I love this one because my dog at home with my parents in Kentucky looks almost exactly Aww. like that. So, I know, making me a little homesick there. But how cute of a dog there. It's a cutie. It's pretty cute, it's exactly. Yeah. All right, thanks, Chris. My pleasure. Morning Sprint's up next here on News 3 this morning.
It is 6.49. Time now for the morning sprint. Chris is keeping his eye on a few showers in the forecast for the afternoon, but he says it's going to be another hot and humid day. Christina Laurie is reporting on why local beekeepers are worried about what the government wants them to put on their labels. But we start in Sauk City, where the state health department is criticizing a nursing home for not protecting three female residents from a convicted sex offender who was also living there. The Baraboo News Republic reports investigators identified nine violations and determined the Maplewood of Sauk Prairie home placed its female residents in immediate danger by failing to watch 69-year-old Galen Malish. He now faces multiple felony charges for those alleged assaults. An administrator for the facility told the state health department it will continue to work toward protecting the health and well-being of all of its residents. A former Wisconsin state trooper is set to be sentenced later today on child pornography charges. Frank Richard Torres pleaded guilty to five felony counts for possessing child porn. He served as a state trooper for more than 20 years before resigning in February of 2017 after he was arrested. Authorities found more than 80 digital storage devices with images and videos of children performing sex acts at his home. Torres later admitted to downloading those files. Dane County Sheriff's Office is investigating how an inmate died inside the jail on Wednesday morning. The lieutenant in charge of the jail said the 29-year-old man from Beaver Dam was having trouble breathing. When jail and medical staff started CPR, an autopsy by the medical examiner concluded the death did not appear suspicious. The man had recently been arrested for a fourth time drunk driving offense and a probation violation. The head of the State Department of Corrections says a program to outfit certain jail officers with body cameras is behind schedule. The DOC received more than $590,000 from the state to buy 200 body cameras, specifically for officers working in solitary confinement units at six maximum security prisons. The department was supposed to submit a report on that program on July 1st, but Secretary Kathy Jess says the process has taken taken longer than expected and an industry-wide shortage of body cams has delayed it even further. State arson investigators are blaming a fatal home explosion near the town of Oneida on a gas leak. Two people were killed when that house blew up last week. A 27-year-old woman died at the scene. A 65-year-old man died from burn-related injuries the next day at the hospital. Oneida police say a criminal investigation into this incident is now closed. A 19-year-old faces hit and run and other charges this morning after Madison police say he rolled over his car on the east side and pretended that he wasn't the driver. Police say that man flipped his car Tuesday night at the intersection of South Stoughton Road and Cottage Grove Road. He then ran away, allegedly took off some of his clothing and told police that he was jogging when the crash happened. We've been tracking some showers early this morning, but those have since dissipated on Doppler track over the past three hours. We'll expect more showers and thunderstorms to come throughout the rest of the day. Cloud cover early showers and thunderstorms around lunch with temperatures in the 80s and then eventually clearing out. Hour by hour, here's how that should look. Showers and thunderstorms will develop right around 1230, pushing their way to the south and east. Eventually, the cloud cover comes on through as well with the cold front working through and then temperatures falling through the upper 70s and eventually upper 50s by tomorrow morning. Morning. Thank you very much, Chris. Janesville's public safety unions do not expect to lose members, despite last week's Supreme Court ruling that unions can no longer require non-members to pay membership fees as they're negotiating contracts for union members. The Janesville Gazette reports that city's Professional Police Association believes its benefits guaranteeing a lawyer to its members will prevent police officers from leaving the union. Janesville Firefighters Union also told the paper it did not expect membership to drop after that Supreme Court ruling. Farmers here in Wisconsin and across the country are watching the reaction from China as increased U.S. tariffs are set to go into effect tomorrow. President Trump is set to put those increased tariffs on $34 billion worth of Chinese imports and is threatened to expand that to as much as $450 billion worth of goods. Chinese officials are threatening an immediate response this morning. They've already threatened to increase taxes on soybeans, grains, and cotton it imports from America. Monroe Street businesses struggling with this summer's road construction are getting support from businesses on State Street. The organizers of the annual Maxwell Street Days event on State Street have invited all of the businesses on Monroe Street to take part. That festival has traditionally only been open for companies on State Street. Maxwell Street Days starts two weeks from tomorrow, runs from July 20th through the 22nd, all along State Street. Beekeepers and syrup producers are reacting after the FDA re announced that it will reconsider guidelines of adding added sugars to nutrition labels. The FDA is reconsidering that idea 
It's a proposal designed to educate consumers about what they're taking in, but some call it misleading. The Dane County Beekeepers Association says there are no added sugars in honey because honey is all natural. Many syrup producers feel the same way. Beekeepers say they're afraid the new labels will turn people away from buying their products. The federal agency said it acknowledges that the feedback from producers indicates that their proposal does not provide the clarity that the FDA intended. You can look for updates to this story at channel3000.com. Christina, thank you. There's another chance to help make up for the shortage of blood and platelet donations this time of year. The Red Cross is hosting its 18th annual Beach Days Blood Drive at the Sheridan Hotel on John Nolan Drive. It's as incentives to come out and end donate. The Red Cross is offering people a free t-shirt, a $10 Visa card, and a picnic if they come give blood. The drive runs from 11 to 6. 24-hour bike ride this weekend in our area is hoping to get support for immigrants and refugees. Baltazar Deonda Santana is an immigrant from Mexico, wants those communities to be respected, valued here in Dane County. That's why he's inviting others to join him in a 24-hour bike ride starting at 8 in the morning on Saturday at Olin Park. The Madison Mallards will be looking for their 29th win of the season, hosting the Battle Creek Bombers at the Duck Pond tonight. It is the last night of a three-day Wisconsin special. You get a reserve terrace seat, a brat, cheese curds, ear of corn, beer or soda, and a Mallards hat for $19. Game starts at 6.05 tonight at Warner Park. There's an opportunity today to look back at the 1960s on the UW campus, learn how that decade has helped shape the city of Madison. The university is featuring a handful of exhibits that looks back at that decade of discontent during the Vietnam War, features photography, flyers, other iconic signs of the times. Those exhibits are on display at the Union, Kohler Art Library, and the Chazen Museum of Art. Road work is back on this morning statewide after taking a break for the 4th of July holiday. Drivers got about a 36 hour or so break from construction on the major projects across the state as the Department of Transportation tried to help with the increased traffic. AAA estimates one million Wisconsinites drive somewhere this year for the fourth. 656 right now. Let's touch base with Josh Tim. See if that construction is impacting traffic this morning. Good morning, Josh. Hey, good morning. Well, it's still moving well on the Beltline. No major delays showing up quite yet. Volume is down so far today, which is great news for those of us that are working inbound John Nolan. Starting to tap the brakes near Olin Avenue, adding a minute or two extra on the downtown area. And other main routes heading into the city, they're cruising along at the usual speeds right now with no crashes or delays. Your first alert traffic, I'm Josh Tim. Thanks a lot, Josh. Hope you had a good fourth. Thanks. All right, and we're tracking that heat index one more day. It'll likely feel like the low to mid 90s at times, but once we get through that, a cold front comes through. I'm really excited for this cold <laughs> front, folks. Get this, tomorrow's highs likely struggling to get out of the 70s. Enjoy that break we have this weekend. The heat and the humidity do make a comeback by the middle and end of next week already. We are forecasting upper 80s, close to 90 degrees, and yeah, it'll be humid too. You're, you're going to be kicking yourself come winter when you are saying, oh, Oh, right. There was a time when I thanked the <laughs> Lord for a cold front. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you tomorrow. Making plants that are weather dependent? Get an accurate 12 hour, even a 10 day forecast. Download the Channel 3000 First Alert Weather app and start planning.